North Africa had long been a power struggle between the Europeans and native states, or Ottoman vassals. The Spanish and Portuguese had long held a number of cities within North Africa, largely for future colonization that the discovery of the New World put on hold. The many wars and battles would be fought over these cities, and in today's episode, we'll be covering one of those conflicts, the 1732 Spanish invasion of Iran. During the multi-year-long War of Spanish Secession, the Spanish cities of Iran and Mes al kebe which had been longtime Spanish strongholds in North Africa, were finally retaken by the Beylict of Mascara in 1708, ending over two centuries of European control in the region. With the War of the Secession ended, and with the resurgence of a new Spain, King Philip V organized an expedition to recoup the lost cities, and he was paid largely via threatening the Republic of Genoa in 1726, forcing them to either pay 2 million pesos or have the city be bombed into oblivion. The Spanish fleet would start to be assembled in the city of Alicante at the start of 1732, headed by the Duke of Montemayor, José Carlillo de Alboros. The preparation of the expedition nearly causes the ruin of Alicente, as the town was largely supplied from the port, and most of what came in was automatically given to the expedition. But after months of planning, gathering of men, supplies, and ships, the invasion fleet would finally set sail with its eyes on the city of Iran. Making up this grand fleet would be 12 ships of the line, each of them packing 60 or 74 guns. 50 frigates, packing 32 or 46 guns, 26 galleys with 6 guns each, 96 Zebic vessels, acting as both troop and supply vessels, 109 troop transport vessels, plus hundreds more craft that included a combination of brigs, galleys, bomb vessels, motorboats, and others. The army itself was split into 32 infantry battalions, 12 Royal Guard regiments, and a company of Iranian riflemen, amounting to 23,000 men. Aiding them would be 3,400 cavalrymen split into eight regiments, as well as an artillery battalion which boasted 60 guns and 20 mortars. Mustafa Bouchalem, the Day of Algiers, had received advance warning of the Spanish invasion and gathered his forces for their eventual arrival. With him would be his militia forces amounting to roughly 9,000 men, 1,500 of them being mounted tribal warriors. Most of the men were poorly, if trained at all, and most were poorly equipped, many having firearms dating back decades if not hundreds of years, or they were armed with swords and bows as their only offensive capability. At the center of the army, and acting as its heart and core, however, were 150 Ottoman Janissaries with relatively modern equipment, and they included a small contingent of modern artillery, which numbered 10 pieces. Supporting the day would be Allied troops numbering 1,500 Turkish regulars and 5,000 horsemen from the Kingdom of Fez. The Ottomans themselves would send 2,000 Janissaries from Constantinople to aid as well, but neither force was present during the invasion. The day would be left with his outnumbered and out-equipped forces to fend off the Spanish. On June the 27th, the Spanish would arrive off the coast, landing just the east of Mes al kebe The landing was not heavily opposed, and only skirmishers, consisting of light Algerian cavalry, would engage the Spanish, slowing them down on their advance towards the city. At a location between the two cities, the Spanish would set about building a small fort from where to launch their invasion from. The Algerians would attack multiple times at the encampment, but would be repulsed time and time again. With his force split between three locations, the day knew that he could not have the ability to stop the Spanish. And instead, he decided that the best course of action was to consolidate his forces, harassed the invading troops as best as he could, and await reinforcements. 
the Spanish would reach the gates of Mesalcave on July the 1st, and defending the city would be the 150 Janissaries that the day had at its command. The rest of the men having been transferred out from the city, and taking up positions with the rest of the army in the mountain pass. The Spanish would put the city under siege, but the Janissaries surrendered on the same day, on the condition that they would be allowed to leave Algeria and return home. Albernoz, hearing that the day's troops were on the move, quickly advanced with 7,000 men towards the nearby mountains, where he knew the bulk of the Algerian army was. Caught off guard by the sun advance, the Algerian army scattered, some regrouping in Iran itself, while many others simply laid down their arms and returned home. His forces now scattered and weakened even more, the day pulled all his troops out of Iran, knowing that defending it was not possible, and the Spanish would occupy the city on July the 5th. This would not be the last of the day's attempts, however. In August, after Montemir had left North Africa, he would leave behind a garrison of 8,000 troops in the cities. The day, now reinforced with Afensian troops and Ottoman reinforcements, would attempt to take Iran again. With 10,000 men, he would advance on the city, but ultimately would fail, losing 2,000 men to the Spanish's 500. While he would continue to probe the city for the rest of the year, he never had the manpower to dislodge the garrison troops, and he'd ultimately admit defeat and send the rest of his men back home, leaving Spain once again with the Algerian footholds. Yet, Spain would not forget of this war, and years later, they would once again come back in force to try and pacify Algeria, leading to one of the largest disasters ever to face the Spanish army. But that is a topic for another time. <laughs>